Hello, hello folks, Old Trick Talks Cars here. I hope you're well and I hope you're keeping safe and I hope you're able to sleep at night in these extraordinary hot conditions. Uh, given the hot conditions, it's only right that episode 11 of Old Twit's pre-classic predictions features an Italian soft top. So today we are looking at the Alfa Romeo GTV Spider, the 916 version. Great car, available just about under our 2K budget and I think there's never been a better time to buy a car. And unusually, I know what you're thinking, an old Alfa, that's going to end badly. These cars aren't bad. I think they're a pretty reliable car. I think they're fully galvanised. They don't rust so much as the old Alphas. And I think particularly in twin spark guise, that's a very well proven and enjoyable engine. So let's remind you of the criteria that I use here very quickly and then let's jump straight into it. The Alfa Romeo GTV and the Alfa Romeo Spider Type 916 were two sports cars produced by Alfa Romeo between 1993 and 2004. During that period, around 39,000 Spiders were built and 41,700 GTVs. Both cars were designed by Enrico Fumia at Pininfarina and the GTV was planned to re-establish the sporty coupe tradition of Alfa Romeo for the 1990s. The Spider featured a folding soft top with a five hoop frame which completely disappears from sight under a flush fitting cover. An electric folding mechanism was fitted as an option. At its launch, many journalists commented that the Alfa had improved overall build quality considerably and that it came very close to equaling its German rivals. Initially, the Spider came with a 2-litre 16-valve twin spark engine giving 150 brake horsepower, as well as a 3-litre V6. It's commonly acknowledged that the 2-litre twin spark engine is a very competent engine and probably the choice of the two giving a better compromise between performance, economy and usability. Autocar said of the engine, twin camshafts, twin balancer shafts, variable valve timing and four valves per cylinder combine to produce 150 of the smoothest, most melodic horses available from any four-pot manufacturer in the world. Praise indeed. In the UK, two specs were offered on the two litre twin spark variant. The more basic Turismo, which could still be specified with extras such as leather trim, and the Lusso, which would normally come with a power hood, full leather trim, optional Momo seats and iridescent paint. Luckily, as it is our choice, the vast majority of 916 Spiders in the UK are 2 litre twin sparks. When thinking about an ageing Alfa Romeo, the R word always readily springs to mind. However, for this model, rust worries were largely put to rest by galvanising the, the entire body shell, which no, about, no doubt contributed to making the car excessively heavy and therefore not particularly accelerative in its class, especially the 2 litre. But we believe it's a small price to pay to avoid the rampant rot of most older Alphas. If rust has started to rear its ugly head, it's likely to be found on the rear arches and jacking points, while post-2001 models can occasionally suffer from sill and floor corrosion. So apart from rust, what other things should a potential buyer of a 916 Spider be looking out for? Well, in terms of the engine, our friends the cam belt should be changed every 36,000 miles or three years, so that needs to be checked. Suspension can be clunky, which often means the multi-link suspension will need rebushing. In terms of exhaust, an oval exhaust pipe denotes an original aftermarket exhaust around or twin. Original ones will be nearing the end of their life now, so budget £300 or more to replace those. 
In terms of interiors, well, our old friends Bolsterware will rear its head in these cars as it does in virtually any other car. So check particularly the driver's seat bolster for wears, cracks and holes. In terms of the hoods, you're probably better off with the manual hood because obviously they are more reliable and really have very few faults. Like most cars of this age, the electrically operated roofs can cause problems, so need to be checked. The transmission very rarely gives problems, but check that all gears engage cleanly. If the biting point is unusually high, new clutch may soon be required. All in all, however, given the age of these cars now, they are pretty reliable. And if a good service history is in place, then you shouldn't have too much to worry about. But buyer beware, make all those checks and make sure everything works before you part with your money. In terms of driving characteristics, this car's character and panache are key to its appeal rather than out and out performance, at least in two litre form. It's not in a hot hatch league in terms of performance and scuttle shape can take the edge off its otherwise impressive handling when the going gets tough. The clamshell bonnet on these cars is huge and affords brilliant access to the engine bay area. And I also love how under the bonnet, the two headlights are actually complete fixed sealed units each side rather than the twin headlights that you expect them to be. Just a great alpha quirk. So here we are in howmanyleft.co.uk for the Alfa Romeo Spider. Uh, and it's relatively straightforward picture for a change here, which is nice. So uh, quarter one 2020, which is the latest set of figures that we have available to us from DVLA, shows 617 of the GTV Spider still licensed on the road and 735 on Sorn. Now you'll see from the pattern here, you see the jiggity jiggity pattern up here, you'll notice the peaks are always Q2 and Q3. Well that's not entirely unusual given that this is a spider so what tends to happen is people are obviously registering them for use during the summer months if we get any uh, and then they're going back on Sorn for the winter. So that's what's happening there. So obviously given that this is a Q1 number we'll expect that to jump up a bit when the Q2 and Q3 numbers come out but I wouldn't have thought they're going to uh, breach our nominal threshold of 1000 cars. So yeah it's a pretty rare car and obviously getting rarer. So jumping onto eBay cars and having a look for the Alfa Romeo GTV 916 Spider. I came across this one, which is right at the top of our nominal £2,000 budget, but I've chosen it because I think it's a car you could just drive away and not have to do any more to. So as you can see, it sold on the 11th of July. We're now the 17th of August, so uh, just over a month ago, and there were 25 bids on this car, so quite a lot of interest. So diving into it. This is the twin spark car so in brief 1999 gtv spider 78,000 miles mot till uh, may 2021 partial service history so a picture paints a thousand words so let's have a quick look at these quite nice in the silver probably not my favorite color for these but it's uh it's not a bad color either nice and straight down the sides handsome little thing so this is the twin spark spider black leather uh, black leather they did a weirdy beige that might be gray actually it's hard to tell in these photos sometimes but it looks beige doesn't it in these pictures beige carpets other side nice and straight he'll talk about these wheels in a minute but they have been uh, they're the, what they call a dial alloys and I think they've been refurbed there she is with her down got this little area at the back here with a bit of storage in which is quite handy and there you go leather's looking good bolster can't tell at that one but that one looks all right our old friends the warm bolster not sure if that's been replaced but that looks very clear which is nice not milky or cracked i wondered what that was to start with but again i think it's the stickers on potentially on the tires because he does talk about having just put new tires on it um i'm not sure if the 
the um, chunks of wood and the power tool are included but I like his little setup look at this really organized he's got a nice little I was gonna say that's a TV but I think it's um, a CCTV thingy of some sort so anyway they're the pictures all looking good two thousand pounds it sold for uh 1999 78 000 miles partial service history not using it enough so having to sell recently had steering wheel retrimmed 150 quid and new dial alloys fitted brand new avon tires 280 quid they've done about 20 miles all electrics and roof are in good order i also have an original stereo that needs fitted happy to include this for an additional 100 pounds car can come with either set of alloys in the photos or both for £200 extra. The car has been garaged throughout my ownership and only comes out on sunny days when I can take the roof down. Happy to answer any questions, blah, 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 blah. So again, that's right on, isn't it? Um, 2000, I think that's a car that you can do, you know, anything with and jump straight into and off you go. I think the twin spark engine is a good one. I think that's the one I'd be going for. So yeah, nice little number. That's what you can get for your £2,000. Right then, let's score this bad boy up. So I think in terms of cost, for this particular car, I think it's best to spend right to the top of our budget. So there are cars available for that amount, as you've seen from the one we looked at earlier. Um, there are cars that are worth clearly a lot more. I think in spider terms, if you go any cheaper than 2000 then that's probably likely to be a suboptimal car. So perhaps best avoided. So in terms of cost for this car, I'm giving it a middle of the road five. In terms of mileage, again, they're not a car that's going to get a load of use. Again, if you look at the um, how many left DVLA figures, you'll see how they uh, get registered for the summer then sawned for the winter so this is a part of the year car which means mileages tend to be sensible so for mileage plenty available under 100,000 I give this car an 8. Rarity again they're pretty rare um, they're under a thousand for sure left registered in the country quite a few on sawn um, that number will spike a little bit as the um, figures for the summer months are available however I think it's still uh, appreciably rare and for that reason I give it an 8 for rarity. In terms of plus factor, well look at it, it's an Alfa Romeo. It's a coupe, it's got a lovely, if you get a leather, it's got a lovely leather interior. It just looks beautiful. It's an Alfa Romeo, it's a soft top. Have I mentioned it's an Alfa Romeo? So in terms of plus factors, this has got it coming out of the air vents. So for plus factor I'm giving this little car an 8. In terms of usability, well, we're back to our, it's a two door coupe body with a pretty small boot. So it's not gonna be your choice for family holidays, clearly. Um, so I think I always refer back to a six being probably the best you're gonna achieve for a car of this type. So strangely, I've given this car a six. So that gives it a total of 35, which I think is a great score. I would encourage you to have a look at what's out there if you're interested in this type of car. Clearly the time to buy is actually in the winter. Um, prices are likely to uh, soften a little bit in the winter. So, you know, in the, in the upcoming months, if you're interested in this car, that would be the time to get out there and have a look. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, please do. There'll be plenty of these on the way. I've had a little bit of a high edge, it's just because it's been too hot to really do anything. But more videos will come flowing soon, so subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time.